Well, the longest, one of the harder, and hopefully last test I ever have to take is done. I passed the PE exam. Woo! So today we're gonna go over all the things that I went through in my experience with taking this exam. And I was able to pass this exam on my first try with just about two months of study. So we'll start with a very brief overview of what the PE exam is, and then I'll kind of go over my story and what I did in the two months leading up to the exam. And then at the very end of the video, I'll give you five tips that really should help you pass this test on your first time. So if you're ready to go, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you don't miss any more videos and you can join our growing family here on YouTube. And with that being said, let's get into the video. So what is the PE exam? No, it's not a physical education exam. It's for your professional engineer's license. It's, it's the exam that engineers take after getting a few years of experience and helps get you licensed. Get, getting your license gives you an added level of legitimacy within the industry. So especially if you're working as an engineer in design, you'll likely have to get your license in order to kind of get the higher and better paying jobs. For what I do as a construction engineer, as a general contractor, doesn't really help me as much. It's not really required and not seen a lot in the industry. But again, it kind of does give you that added level of legitimacy and kind of like an extra tool in your tool build. You take the PE exam likely after you take the FE exam, which is the Fundamentals of Engineering exam. And a lot of you have maybe taken that exam right out of college to get your EIT or Engineer in Trainers license. So this is like the next step in that process, but you need some years of experience in order to actually take and get your PE. The test itself is split into two separate sections. Both of them are multiple choice. There are 40 questions in each section and you have four hours in each section so the whole test is eight hours long. When you've been out of school for a while, you realize there's not a lot of times at work when you're focusing and thinking straight for four hours. So it actually is kind of a mentally draining test. The PE exam is an open book test so you have to bring a bunch of reference materials and I'll kind of touch on which reference materials I use a little bit later in the video. So I took the PE civil construction exam. There's a bunch of different other exams within civil. I think there's a civil geotechnical, civil transportation. That's all on the NCEES website. And you'll take the exam that is most suited to the field that you're working in. So the first section of the exam is the PE civil breadth section which basically tests you on all different aspects of civil engineering. And then in the afternoon is the civil depth section. So that goes into your specific section, whether it's structure, transportation, construction, etc. If you have any further questions or more technical questions, I suggest you visit the NCES website and they basically spell out everything there for you. So what did I do in the two months leading up to the exam? So our story starts off with a very procrastinating engineer that is more consumed with his job than he was really with applying for the exam. In Hawaii, you need to get approved by the Board of Engineers in order to sit for the PE exam, and there's an application deadline for that. The procrastinating engineer that's sitting in front of you waited all the way until the last minute to actually apply, and he got approved with about two months left to actually take the exam. Do not do what I did. I definitely had in my head that I wasn't going to try to study if I didn't know if I was going to get approved or not, but once I got approved, I realized, I don't think there's enough time for me to study for this exam. So if you live in a state where you have to get approved by a board in order to sit for the PEA exam, apply as early as you can, do not wait until the last minute. So I was kind of scrambling, I had about two months until the exam and I barely even knew where to start. Luckily I had some other people within my company that also took the PEA exam. Granted, the last person to take the exam was about six years ago and she gave me all of her reference book materials. So at least I kind of had a starting point and some dusty old books to kind of sift through. But then my saving grace came. Victor from Pathseed reached out to me and said, hey, starting this new course for the PE exam, just wanted to get your thoughts on it. I'm trying to launch it pretty soon. So, so naturally I said, of course, I mean, I don't, I don't have anything to study by. So there's a bunch of other courses that you can take for the PE exam. I think there's like an EET one. There's one that's like PPI or something like that. A bunch of those are in like the thousands of dollars and they actually have to start you ahead of time. So I couldn't even actually sign up for these courses. So I saw that the Pathseed course was actually priced at under $300. So I figured, uh, well, I'll try it out. I'll see, maybe there's a reason why it's priced so low. But this was the only course that I used to prep for the exam. And it saved my behind. And I think it did such a good job in preparing me for this exam. So the Pathseed course is 12 hours of pre-recorded video lessons. And you can view these lessons on either your computer, which is what I did, or you can actually even do it on your phone as well. And you have access to this for up to six months. What I did like with the videos is that you were actually able to increase the playback speed. So I think I listened to it on like 1.25 or 1.5 speed. 
to kind of get through a lot of the lessons a lot quicker. And it was nice that I could rewind and rewatch things that I didn't really understand or I needed a little bit more time with. So it worked out really well for me. And I, and I think Pathseed is very clear that they're not like a catch-all type of course. And their main objective is to cover the majority of important points for the exam. And if there's something that you're really struggling with, this course identifies that weakness so you can kind of look more into it. And I would argue that taking this course on its own gets you like 85 to 90% there. So there's options as well. You can print out all the course lessons. They're all in PDF form. So what I did is I printed every sheet out tabbed it all and then I used that and followed along in the lesson so I could write down my own notes. And I actually used that binder a lot during the exam. So again, this is the only course I went through to study for the PE exam. I was able to pass, I got through the course in maybe a little bit over a month. And I think it's outstanding that Patsy provides such high value and I think really great content for under $300. So I would check the terms and conditions, but I'm pretty certain as well that there's a one-time renewal policy in case you fail the exam so you, can, you won't have to pay for the course again. So if you're interested in this course and you want to check it out, they also have a free one-hour structural lesson on their website as well so you can see if this kind of video lesson style is conducive to your learning. So if after all of that you want to enroll in this course, feel free to use my link down below in the description and that'll help you do so. Again, I would never want to pitch anything that I thought was scammy or that it wasn't a great product. I only used this course and I was able to pass the exam and it's so much cheaper than most of the other good options out there. And I think a good amount of the reason why I passed this test really was because of this course. So again, if you're interested, link down below in the description. So after I got through the path seat course, I was a little over a month and I had about maybe three weeks left to actually study for the construction depth portion. And that's when I started just going through practice problems to see what kind of questions were being asked and what areas I needed to study more. I then took off from work the week before the exam. I took the exam on a Friday, so I believe I used Saturday through Thursday and I just studied for maybe about five to six hours every single day. And I was just going through the coursework again, some of the old notes from the previous person that took the exam, and even watched some YouTube videos out there about people's experiences with the exam and what they went through. And that was that, I went in and I took the test, and honestly, when I left, I, I felt like I was on the fence. Which is why I suggest to you all, don't wait till the last minute to study. A lot of people on YouTube were saying they suggest somewhere around four to six months of studying for this PE exam. And I would say that's probably about right where I would have felt actually really comfortable taking the exam. So that was my experience in a nutshell. So here are five tips that'll help you pass your exam on the first try as well. So number one is practice problems. You have to do practice problems. You can't just study, read things. You, you have to go through the problems and go through the process. To me, the best book out there is the NCEAS practice exam. What was very interesting is that the person who gave me books prior also purchased the practice exam and this was maybe six years or more ago and the book was exactly the same except for one question as the one that I had bought this past year. So if somebody has an old practice problem book, you can probably still use that and you'll be fine. But from what I've researched and what I've seen and what I've experienced, that practice exam is very close and the closest you'll ever get to the actual problems on the exam. If you took the FE exam and you did the same thing, looked at the practice problems, my experience with that was that it was spot on for what the actual test was. For the PE exam, I felt like the actual exam itself was maybe slightly more difficult than the practice problems, but still pretty dang close. The other practice problem book that I had was I believe one of the Michael Lindbergh practice problem books, but this one was from a while back, still like five years ago. But I went through those problems as well, both for the morning and the afternoon session, and I just kind of went through all of those. Also, the Path C coursework has practice problems as well that it'll go through with you. So that gave me three avenues of practice problems for the exam. Practicing problems helps you get some of the timing down. You'll see that there are similar concepts that are applied. And a lot of the practice problems is getting you used to going through your reference material and knowing where to look to solve all of these problems. Because again, even though it's open book, you don't have time to be sifting through all of your different materials. You have to know where all of the information is. A lot of people suggest that you actually try and take a timed test. Uh, I didn't have time to do that, um, but it makes a lot of sense for you to do so, so that you can kind of gauge and see where you're at in terms of timing and how quickly you can solve these problems. But you have to do practice problems. There's no way of getting around it. So the tip number two, use pass down information and do a group study. So it really helped me that there was somebody else in the company that passed on the reference material to me so that I could use it to study, even if it was over six years old. 
And I'll be honest, the CIRM or the Civil Engineering Reference Manual, which is the main book that everybody says to use for the PE exam, I was using like the 14th edition. I think they're on maybe 17 or 18 or something right now. Um, but I was using like the version from 2014. I, I think it still worked, I passed the test. But I was trying to go the budget friendly route. Some people may not want to take that risk and I definitely understand that. That's just what I did. So as people run in your company, a lot of times they won't even use that reference material ever again and they'll be glad to just offload it onto you. I also mentioned group study because if you're working for maybe a design firm and you have a bunch of people that are taking the PE exam, you can kind of put your heads together and that I think would really help in terms of studying and knowing what to do. Also for the more expensive courses, maybe if you have multiple people, you can split the cost of the course and share information that way. Also it never helps to have a little bit of friendly competition to kind of get you going. But I will say this, I did create my own binder even though I was using somebody else's notes. There's just something for me about tabbing things yourself and making sure that you personally put a spot on something that helps you remember. Again, knowing where everything is is very important for the exam. So tip number three, you're going to have to sacrifice. When you're taking the PE exam, you likely have a full-time job. So even so you may use your weekends to, you know, go out, hang out with friends, I don't know, party. So when you're taking the PE exam, you already have a full-time job. Maybe you want to use your weekends to just relax and not really think about anything. You're going to have to make use of your weekends in order to pass this test. So you're going to have to make sacrifices. So, so for me, both weekend days, I would dedicate a couple hours to studying. Sunday was probably my biggest day of studying where I would study from maybe about 9 in the morning to about 3 in the afternoon. Just going through problems, going through the path seed course. And I had to say no to a lot of things because I knew I really wanted to get this exam done. This exam costs about $400. Uh, when you tack on the practice exam, it's close to 500 bucks. You don't want to have to take this test again, especially when you go through the actual eight hours, you really don't want to have to take this test again. So to me, any sacrifice you have to make is worth it. So tip number four, I do suggest that you take some sort of course and start early. So just for me, especially having a full-time job, you don't really have time to kind of bring all the information together and consolidate it into your own study plan. That to me is the perk of the course, any course out there. It'll take all the information and consolidate it to what you need in order to pass the test. So I don't know about any other course out there besides Pathseed, but it was very helpful for me to have all of that information ready for me. And I all I had to do was just listen, take some notes, tab my stuff up, and I was ready to go for the test apparently. And don't do what I did and wait till the last minute. I would have felt much more comfortable studying maybe at least a month or two earlier. This also gives you some time too to just deal with life. You don't have to be as strict on your schedule and you don't have to put as much stress on yourself. And tip number five, when you're going through the exam, do all of the problems that you know first, then come back to the ones that you're going to struggle with. This is just a general test taking tip, but being out of school for a long time, I kind of forgot this myself and it really helped me during the exam. So my experience during the exam was I went through all of the problems and for both sections, I answered with relative confidence, probably about 60% of them. 20% of them, I narrowed it down to maybe one or two answers and 20% of them, I knew I needed to come back and just rethink the whole problem. So that last 40% of the test took over half of the test for me. I got through the entire test, saw every single problem within the first two hours. So probably about at the hour and a half mark, I had already seen and kind of thought a little bit about each and every problem. And then that last two and a half hours I spent doing that last 40% of the test. I personally used all of the time in the test. Maybe if I studied a little longer, I wouldn't have felt as stressed for time, but it was very good. Every question is worth the same amount of points. So get all the easy ones, everything that you know out of the way so that you can spend the majority of the time dealing with the ones that you don't know of. Also, don't forget to bring a watch, not a smart watch, but just a regular watch because the room that I was in didn't have a clock. It's because the lady was only announcing like when you had 15 minutes left, uh, I would have hated to not know where I was at in terms of time until 15 minutes were left in the test. You pretty much can't do anything at that point. So make sure you bring a watch as well. Well, that's the story of the PA exam, what I went through, and hopefully those tips at the end also help you give you more confidence in passing the PE exam. If you have any questions on this, feel free to comment below. I'll do my best to reply to you. You can also DM me on Instagram. I can answer questions there as well. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button 
and subscribe and hit the notification bell below so you can join our growing family here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for your patience during my posting hiatus. Uh, but I really appreciate all of you out there and I'll see you on the next video.